welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith here on YouTube. If you've ever been told that up in heaven there's a library of books of unfulfilled prophecies, yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the bell. You've been taught something really goofy. In fact, so goofy, it's God's word directly contradicts it. Best way I could put it. So uh, case in point, we're going to head over to the Jim Baker show and we're going to be listening to Larry Sparks and uh, some select pieces of his recent appearance on Jim Baker's program. Larry Sparks, if you're not familiar with him, he works with Destiny Image Publishing, which is one of the major publishing houses of NAR uh, authors, New Apostolic Reformation. But don't tell Dr. Michael Brown because he doesn't believe that it exists. You know, it's just a figment of people's imagination, conspiracy theory and stuff like that. But uh, Larry Sparks is a guy who also claims that he receives direct prophetic revelations from God himself. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and so he, he's going to be interacting with Jim and Lori Baker along these lines, and uh, we're going to start with him talking about a new era of prophecy that is apparently upon us and about to be released. But in this new era of prophecy discussion, you're going to hear... Larry Sparks say some things that that he's lamenting about the current prophetic movements and stuff, and uh, we'll note that uh, this is uh, yet another example of ways in which people in the charismatic movement try to, to deflect and um, and shift blame away uh, uh, from themselves when it comes to unfulfilled prophecies, also known as, are you ready for this, false prophecies, but uh, let's check in with Larry Sparks, Jim, and Lori Baker. Here we go. Wow. That's wow. excellent, the way you put Larry, it. What is the new era you're talking about? Well, for 2,000 years, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, a revival history kind of geek. I don't know how else oh, to say good. it. I, I got my Master of Divinity from Regent, studying church history and renewal. And for the last 2,000 years, we've been in a season where we've seen revival after revival, awakening after awakening, and a lot of them have not been sustained. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, you see, they start in this year and they end in this year. Unsustained revivals. Gasp. Okay. Maybe it has something to do with that the Holy Spirit really had nothing to do with them. You know, I, I think of like, you know, Lakeland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, Toronto. Brownsville, you know, stuff like that. God, why aren't we seeing revival sustained? What, and now all of a sudden you have all these people. And they think of fire and glory, yeah. Sign Tim Sheets, Dutch Sheets, Chuck Pierce, Lana Vosser, talking about a new era. I'm like, God, I don't want hype. I don't want Chuck Pierce of Cuckoo Banana Town. You think that guy's legit? Really? I don't want something that's repackaged in new language that we've been saying year after year after year. Because yeah. can I just, I'm going to have a therapy moment right here on stage. Like, <laughs> Listen. as a prophetic person, a prophet, for the last several years, just being honest, okay? Mm -hmm. We need to be honest about this stuff. Yes. I've heard a lot of words, a lot of prophetic words from people I trust and respect, and I yeah. know they're yeah. globally recognized prophets. Yeah. And I feel like I'm hearing the same word year after year, maybe repackaged in uh, different language, of course. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, why aren't they happening? Because yeah. they're false. <laughs> the answer's simple. <clears throat> yeah, let, let's take a look at a biblical text here, shall we? Um, let's, we'll, we'll start in, uh, yeah, let's see here. I don't want Second Thessalonians. I'm going to duplicate this tab, and we're going to go to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Core passage regarding testing of false prophets. Keep this in mind, um, that, that in the ancient theocracy of Israel, you, you, you if you're a false prophet, you, you dead. Uh, yeah, this was a capital crime. You, you, you'd end up on death row for about two minutes, but while they got the rocks. So anyway, Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, and, and watch how this works, because the, the major emphasis here is that this is a prophecy about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Deuteronomy 18, 15, Yahweh your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, like Moses. Moses is writing from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my God, or see this great fire any more lest I die. And Yahweh said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him, 
and whoever will not listen to uh, to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. And that's a bad thing. You know, you don't listen to this prophet. Oh, God's, you, you, God's going to hold you accountable for that. So it's like, so note here, we're talking like eternity accountable. You don't want to listen to this prophet? Mm. There are eternal consequences for not listening to that guy, which immediately is going to raise up questions within you. It's like, ah, you know, well, how do we, how do we know which which guy this is and, and, and all this kind of stuff? But then it goes on. But the prophet who presumes, presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Death penalty for the false prophet. So presumptuous prophets who speak in the name of God, and then here's the definitive question. So if you say in your heart, how do we know the word that Yahweh has not spoken? Notice the question is very direct. Okay, so how do we know which one God has not spoken? Really? So when a prophet speaks in the name of Yahweh, if the word does not come to pass mm -hmm. or come true. That is a word that Yahweh has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, and you need not be afraid of him. End of story. So there it is. So false prophecy if is one that doesn't come true. So there you go. There's your test given by God himself regarding false prophecy. Prophets. Now, there are other tests. They're teaching you to chase after other gods, teaching false doctrine, making God's word void. They are also false prophets. If they're not calling you to repent of your sins, but, you know, see Jeremiah 23, they are making you secure in your rebellion against God. Yeah, that's a false prophet, too. Scratching, itching ears, false prophecy kind of stuff. So uh, you, you get the idea. So here's Larry Sparks. He's lamenting the fact that it just sounds like there's all these repackaged words, 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 and nothing ever seems to come to pass. Why? Because <laughs> they're false prophets. That's the reason why, Larry. They're coming to pass. And I started getting aggravated and frustrated, and the Lord said, Larry, the prophets will prophesy. And I'm like, okay, that's a no-brainer. Of course, the prophets will prophesy. He said, no, the prophets will keep prophesying. They will keep saying what I'm saying. You'll note that uh, he has verbal dialogue. With God. Hmm. Until people actually partner with the prophetic words. Oh, oh wow. Listen to this. See, yes, yeah, see, the reason why all these prophecies aren't coming to pass, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, the prophets are going to keep prophesying until you. you. See, it's up to you. You have to partner with God and you have to act like these prophecies are true. See, it's your fault they haven't come to pass. And that's the reason why these prophets are repeating themselves all the time. That's what he's saying. Listen. Like, okay, that's a no-brainer. Of course, the prophets will prophesy. He said, no, the prophets will keep prophesying. They will keep saying what I'm saying until people actually partner with the prophetic words, oh. until my church, until my people actually live, think, function, act, and pray like that prophetic word is actually true. Because uh, Really? R really? Really? You see, it's, it's your fault, people. It's your fault that these prophecies haven't come true because you haven't partnered and acted like they are true. Therefore, you know, they, they just go unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Wish I was making that up. Another passage worth looking at, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah was a true prophet, by the way. And Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11, here's what it says. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. Talk, God's talking. It shall not return to me empty. It shall accomplish. Notice, when God sends a word out, that word accomplishes. It shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. You see, God's word doesn't return to him void, and he sends it out, and his word accomplishes the thing, the purpose for which he sent it. You see, God didn't, you remember, remember the days of creation, right? In, in Genesis chapter 1, you know, it's worth looking at here. It's in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 3, God said, let there be light. And notice it says there was light. You see, it didn't say, and God said, let there be light, and why is there no light? 
hey, you angels, you need to partner with me on this. You got to believe that there's going to be light if there's going to be light. And then, the, boom, finally the light comes on. It's like, thank you. My word can't do nothing until you partner with it. This is nonsense. This is blasphemous. So note then, it's your fault. You you haven't partnered with the prophets. You don't. You're you're not believing these words to be true prophetic words. Because if they you did, then then they'd be fulfilled and stuff. This is nonsense. Prophetic word is conditional. New Testament prophetic word. There are some things that you know. Jesus is coming back. You can vote. Okay, I I'm backing this up. He just said prophetic words are conditional. No, God says His word will accomplish the thing for which He sent it act and pray like that prophetic word is actually true because a prophetic word is conditional new testament prophetic word there are some things that you know jesus is coming back you can vote yes you can vote no jesus is coming back <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. that is an established set in time prophetic word but it is one of those things where you get personal prophecies promises that you know are from the lord corporate prophecies prophecies over nations there is a responsibility there is an obedience and while i was here no text says this. Let me give you another example, okay? Um, famous prophecy that we all know about. Uh, let me see. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9. All right. Let me hunt this down here. This is, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, oh, no, I want to go, I actually want to go to 7, because uh, 9 has a different emphasis. Both of these are prophecies regarding Christ, but I want you to notice that in Isaiah chapter 7, uh, God sends uh, Isaiah to go and prophesy to King Ahaz. So, so here's what it says, Isaiah 7, 3. Yahweh said to Isaiah, go out to meet Ahaz, you and Sheir Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field, and say to him, now, now by the way, Ahaz is like really worried you know, about the king of Assyria. So be careful and quiet. Do not fear. Do not let your heart be faint. God's saying this to Ahaz because of these two smoldering stumps and firebrands at the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria, uh, the son of Remaliah, because Syria with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah has devised evil against you. God's saying, don't worry about that. Just don't worry about that. So let us go up again uh, against Judah and terrify it and let us conquer it for ourselves and set up the son of Tabael as king in the midst of it. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, it shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, the head of Damascus is Rezin, and within 65 years Ephraim will be shattered from being a people, and the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Remaliah, and if you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. So you'll note then that God gives this prophecy to Ahaz, who's not exactly a believer, like, and he's not believing this at all, and then God is going to tell Isaiah to tell Ahaz to ask for a sign to prove to him, a sign that will demonstrate that this prophecy that he's given is true. So again, Yahweh spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of Yahweh, your God, let it be a deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, oh, I, I will not ask. I, I will not put the Lord to the test. <laughs> That's total unbelief. He's hiding it in piety. And, and so, um, so he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you now weary my God also? So therefore Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll note here that um, God's prophecy that he gave through Isaiah is going to come to pass, despite the fact that Ahaz don't believe a word of it. And God himself now gives him a sign, and the sign is that the virgin will conceive and give birth. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying here? There's some interesting stuff going on here, but uh, the, the whether or not this prophecy would come to pass had nothing to do with whether or not Ahaz partnered with it. Mm -hmm. Like, not at all. And this wonderful facility, I was up in the room, and the Lord's like, I'm going to tell you how prophecy comes to pass. I said, okay. He said, look at Genesis 12 with Abram. Abram gets a word of the Lord. God tells him to go somewhere. He tells him to leave his family, leave, his, leave that country, and go to a different place. God gives him an instruction. God gives him this amazing promise. I'll bless you. I'll make you a great nation. And, you know, we love those prophecies and promises of blessing. Mm -hmm. We love the prophecies that tell us of all the great things God is going to do. And then we get frustrated. Why isn't happening? 
Well, Abram answers the question. Do you know what he did? It says, he did as the Lord instructed. Mm. Yeah, um, no. Uh, Hebrews 11 makes it clear that by faith, Abraham obeyed God. He believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So you kind of saying, well, the, re the, the God told me personally that the way prophecy is fulfilled is by human obedience. No, that's just straight up. That's not God who told you that, because I just shared several passages of Scripture that demonstrate that when God speaks, his word does not return to him void and accomplishes the thing for which he sent it. Prophecies are fulfilled because God doesn't lie, and prophecies are not dependent upon our obedience or partnering with them. Uh, and Ahaz didn't partner with the prophecy of Isaiah, and yet that came true. So you kind of get the point there. Now, second piece of all of this, um, are you ready? This is, uh, we're going to be talking about the library, a, a library full of books, full of unfulfilled prophecies. This is kind of part two of this segment. Here's Lori Baker talking to Larry Sparks and, and affirming that what he's saying has got to be from the Lord because she was hearing this kind of stuff to herself. Here we go. God spoke to me driving home, about a 15-minute drive. Spoke. No, he, he didn't, Lori. Three things. I I thought, well, I better check this Larry Sparks out and see who he is. He's preaching <laughs> at our he's preaching at Morningside on Gray Street. Tune you in. I couldn't grab a notepad fast enough. Look at these notes. I was mm -hmm. writing as fast as I could. Because Larry, you spoke the exact words that the Lord had just spoke to me in the car driving home. You see that 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 proves it's gotta be true, right? Nope, that's not the proof of whether or not somebody hears from God. One of them was about the library and the yeah. dusty books. Yeah, yeah. The Lord had told me on the way home, go home, Lori. I need you to pull out all your old journals. That's amazing. You need to open your old journals. I talked to you about it the day before in the airport. I said, honey, I'm supposed to... I have journals that I have written so many things. And yeah. from I, even when you came to my church years ago, and I spelled Jim Baker in my notebook with one K, I was like, <laughs> in my journaling and in my, and in my, my note taking. And he told me that. And I, I turned on last night's service, and you talk about this library <laughs> with Dusty yeah, and yeah. to go and find any of the old words what did spoken that mean? over you. Well, what happened was the Lord, I don't get many visions. You know, I, I publish the prophets. I've had a handful. So when I get a vision, I pay, a lot, I've, I pay very close attention to it. What happened is the Lord gave me a vision of a library in heaven, very briefly. And I saw all these books. And it was beautiful. I'm, I'm obviously a parent. I have a kid. So I'm thinking of all these great Disney movies with these big sprawling libraries and the, la the, the ladder that goes across. And I see these beautiful books, but they all had dust on them. And I asked the Lord, God, what are these books and why is, there, why is there dust on them? He said, these are the books of unfulfilled prophecy. Right. Mm -hmm. No, that just flat out contradicts Deuteronomy 18. God does not keep a library of unfulfilled prophecies. Unfulfilled prophecies are proof that the person who spoke the prophecy is a false prophet. So note now, we're, we're, we're adding to the scriptures via this direct revelation. And oh, and Lori Baker is confirming because God told her too that this is this is totally legit and this is true, man. So um, the way this is working out then is is that see, there's a library of unfulfilled prophecies, and God's getting ready to yeah you know, to open up those books and blow off the dust and do something about that. Uh huh. Right. And then later on, as we ministered last night, I just encourage you guys, you know, last night what happened is God interrupted what we wanted to do. Yeah. I had a sermon, God brought us into a place, yeah. and I believe specifically, if you're, if you're believing for children to come home, yes. God had a word concerning that. He did. If you are 50 and above, and you're wondering, God, what is my assignment? What is my call? Yeah. I believe God has an impartation, the Caleb spirit he wants to release. Really, God's going to release the Caleb spirit. Well, I'm over 50 years old, and uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be receiving any Caleb spirit anointings. I mean, th these guys are complete charlatans. I mean, do you sell trinkets and, uh, you know, and prayers to the Virgin Mary and stuff, too? What is this? To you and awaken and cause you to arise? But yeah, I believe God is stepping into that library. He's blowing off the dust, and it's time for us to go back, find those journals, find those words, find those promises, and say, Lord, it's time, no more delay, because I believe God wants to break that delay. Right. 
Yeah, I think you get the point. Uh, this is all, this is not biblical teaching or doctrine. This is now based upon um, external revelations that are not found in Scripture, which are in fact just excuses now being used by people in the charismatic movement to explain you know, away the obvious. W why are these prophecies not coming true? Because they're false, and the people speaking them are false prophets. They are wolves. So, yeah, I think you get the point. Stick to what God says regarding how to test a true prophet or a false prophet, and you're not going to be deceived by people like this and then have to add new doctrines to your Bible and say, well, yeah, you know, there's a library in heaven full of dusty old prophecy books, and, and I believe that we're now in a season when God's going to blow them off, and, and we can say to them, God, now it's time that there be no more delays regarding these prophecies because they haven't become true yet. They're not going to come true because God didn't give them, and if you know your Bible, it's pretty easy to figure that out. Anyway, hope you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how to share the video is down below, and, uh, and all, also all the information on how you can support us financially by becoming a crew member or supporting us on Patreon. That's also all the links are down below as well. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Mm -hmm.